Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Melissa New Gear Nihur. Hi, welcome to my channel. I speak about missing children and my channel. And I also have a series called Gone Too Soon where I speak about celebrity that past have passed away. So today, um, I was gonna talk about I wanted to start a new series called To Talking About the First African American Billionaire. Um, but I think I'm gonna have to hold on that one just because there's not a lot. It's hard for me to find some. If you know some, um let me know in the comments below and I will write it down on my list. But the list right now is just only a few. So I really want to have like a big list before I even start the series. Um, because I don't want to do 10 and then completely start the whole series. Just because I couldn't find any more. So with that being said, I didn't notice that I did two gone too soon cases. I made videos back to back until right now. So today I will be doing... um. I will be talking about two missing children so let's go ahead and get started with the first one and we are going to be talking about Roger he went missing at 14 years old um, his height and height and weight is 5'7 130 pounds a, a purple sweatshirt a denim jacket jeans and sneakers Caucasian male brown hair hazel eyes the tip of Roger's middle finger was purely crushed in an accident. Roger was last seen in, at his residence in Porter, Maine on, this, on October 4th of 1973. He and his three siblings had breakfast together after their mother left to work for work. They were all supposed to catch the bus to school, but Roger told his sibling he was going to skip the to school to attend a fair, very under clear weather he was ever arrived. There never been heard from again. His father reported him missing. Few details are available in his case. There has no been trace of Roger since 1973. And you know, with all my cases, I will put the information down in the description below. With this case, I, you know what? I feel like, and I think I've always thought about it in every single missing case, missing kids, missing kids that I talk about, but especially the, like the older ones, like you know the 14s and the 15s and stuff like that i feel like we make decisions out of nowhere and have you it's hard okay so have you ever made a decision to go somewhere but you also have that feeling that you're like mm, should i go i really have this f something in me telling me not to but you still do it type of feeling um, I think that it happens with every, you know, with every, every person, even an adult. And I f always think about these type of things when it comes to these missing kids. Would he had not gone to that fair, would he still been alive? Obviously, yes. If he would have gone to school and not skipped school, he would have been still today. Um, I'm hoping that they question everybody. Um... I hope that, um, I hope they talk to everybody in the fair. I hope they talk to his friends. There was something going on, you know, because us as teenagers, we really do not tell friends everything. You know, there, I mean, sometimes if, even if you, when you do have siblings, you do are very, you have a close bond to your siblings. But there's time when you don't have a close bond with your siblings and you just don't tell them everything. I wonder if that's the case with that. Did they talk to the family? Did somebody see him? Did they talk to the people in the fair? Did he even went to the fair? Was he lying about going to the fair? I mean, there's so many questions that you're thinking that you're like, did that happen? <laughs> so now we're going to go to the next case. Um, let me talk about Rod, uh, Robert, I mean, Douglas, Charles Champ. Um, he went missing when he was three years old. Um, height and weight is three thirty-five pounds. Red and blue plain shirt, blue or red pants, and love doors. Caucasian male, sandy brown hair, blue eyes. Douglas had a mole on his right shoulder. His nickname is Dougie. So Dougie was last seen outside his family mobile home on Arthur Road, Gorfer Road in Arthur, Maine, in at ten thirty a.m. on June second, nineteen seventy-one. He was playing in the sand pile apparently 25 yards in front of his resident and his mother was inside taking on the telephone talking on the telephone when she went out to check on her son he was gone Douglas has never been heard from again the area around the home is ruled 
heavily wooded, bushy, and swampy. An extensive search involved hundreds of volunteers turn up. No addiction of the child's whereabouts. Authorities originally believed he weren't away and became lost. However, this possibility is now deemed like since he was never located. Police tracker dogs traced Douglason through a field pass in Apple Ord into a farm and down the driveway to the main road. The rest the scent apparently stopped there. Douglas' father, who was a Surly police officer in 1971, believes he may have been placed in a vehicle at the location. Douglas did not bark when the child disappeared, something his mother found unusual. Why do I have a feeling I've talked about this case? Sorry guys. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Sorry. Um Douglas case was reopened in 1993 at the request of his father. His parents are now divorced and his mother moved to New York after he went missing. Everyone in Douglas family have been ruled out as a suspect and his case his father believes Douglas was abducted and murdered by a sex offender who lived in the area. The person has since died. Douglas case remains unsolved. I think these type of cases Especially when you have like a dad or even a mom or, you know, what, you know, in the, in the justice system, um, I've heard of cases where, you know, you, the cop has stopped somebody and, and they just want to get back to that person, you know, want to get back and hurt that person the way that they hurt them. I really do feel like one, it was a sex offender. It could have been someone that knew the dad i mean obviously there's he's a sex offender douglas dad may have a, arrested this person allegedly so could it i mean the person is already passed on so i just hope that they do are looking at other avenues um looking into more more people um and i don't want y'all to come in my comments trying to blame the mom for for leaving him there outside and stuff they she did say that they had a dog and for the dog not to bark was unusual for the for the dog the mom said it was unusual the dog dog usually always would bark because they didn't she, he didn't know the person so i'm wondering i'm kind of going with that theory that it could have been somebody that they knew but also i'm going to go with the theory that it could have been a stranger and be the reason that the dog didn't bark was because he probably gave the dog some food or or just because douglas didn't cry i don't know I, i'm trying i'm trying to figure out but i'm really leaning more to it had to be somebody that doug knew or somebody that was really convincing that, you know, the person probably be like, you want to go get some candy? I mean, you tell a three-year-old you want to go get some candy, the three-year-old is going to go. I mean, please, trust me. If it was me and somebody that I did not know come up to me like, you want to go get some candy? Yeah. Where? You know? So it, it, it could be that. It could be somebody that just tricked him to think that they were going to go get candy and that wasn't the thing. But... At the same time, I don't, well, I don't think he ran away, like walked away, because they did say that they, the dogs followed the scent of of him, and then it stopped like somewhere in, by the freeway area. So, was there, there a car waiting for the person? It's just so many questions I have, y'all. It's just so many questions. I will leave the information with this the, uh, in the description below this video. Y'all have a great, great weekend. I mean, Monday. Um, be careful. I live in the Houston area, and we're there's we're supposed to have some storms. I hope we don't, but you never know. It is kind of windy, so that's 
that. But yeah, guys, y'all have a great, great, great Monday. Be careful. Be safe. And I'll see you on the next video.